So here we have a slight dilemma. In this small apartment that we're staying in, we had it renovated, but we're running, how do you run a house or a small apartment of just 15 amps? Um, if you add up these appliances here together, the kettle 10 amps, the water heater from the uh, washing machine, that's another 11 amps. Then um, there's the oven, that's 10 amps. Just one of these rings alone is about 6 amps, so if you add them up, it's, 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 uh, it's quite a lot. Then of course you have the, the water cylinder, water heater in the cupboard, um, which on its own is 11 amps. So um, how's that going to work? 15 amps total. And uh, I live in the UK, and in the UK uh, you have on your main incomer, you have a, um, a 80 amp fuse, which is quite forgiving, it's quite a lot of current. But here, um, they have, instead of having a, a main incoming fuse, they have a, um, a type of adjustable overload. And they've adjusted this to 15 amps because it's cheaper. And the reason being for that is simple because in these type of apartments, people only really need electricity for the lights and everything else would be um, gas. So all your heavy duty appliances would be like the water heater and um, a very, the, the cooker for instance and it would all be gas and the oven would be gas. So what to do? How, how can you run all entire apartment off of just 15 amps? Well as it turns out it's not too much of a problem because you don't really use all of the appliances at the same time. Um, for instance you might just turn the kettle on and then maybe use that and you don't go above 15 amps. But it turns out the biggest culprit really is the water heater. Because the water heater inside the cupboard, it would have the nasty habit of just coming on just at the same time as you're boiling the kettle. So what can be done about this? Well, this got me thinking. And uh, if I thought there was a way to detect when any of these other appliances are being used, that the water heater can just be temporarily turned off. For instance, when you boil, boil the kettle, it detects the kettle is, big, is switched on, and then the water heater is turned off. And that would solve a good 99.9% of the problem. So, my solution was to detect inside the fuse board with a CT or current transformer, or more accurately, a current sensing relay. And, um, It uh, seems to do the trick. If we could simply detect all the greedy appliances via this uh, sort of current sensing transformer or current sensing relay, it's a bit like a, a clamp meter can sense the current around a wire. This you can adjust that if X amount of current passes through the, the wires passing through the hole in the, in the center of it, um, it, you can adjust it so that it would then trigger the, the switch over there, then a live signal is fed through there that operates this relay here that can handle more current. I've simply linked together all the spare contacts so that uh, gives it more longevity and can handle more current. I don't need that amount of current for that small little water heater, but it's good to know and it will make it last longer. It's good to uh, do a bit of overkill. Yeah, so, um, I mean, the way it's done now is more proof of concept. It does work, and um, later I'll mount everything neatly onto pieces of dun rail to make it look all proper. I just wanted to see if it would work, and uh, it works a treat. Um, you can't really see much, but the original circuits have been taken out, fed through um, the hole in there. I didn't know if that would work, if you could t test multiple um, circuits at once. But it seems to do it just fine. I don't think it's designed for that, but I don't see why you couldn't do it. Um, I will um, show you a schematic. Unfortunately, this uh, schematic is in Portuguese because we're in Madeira. And I would like the next electrician to have some sort of idea of what I've done. So I've put a little uh, a schematic on the door. So if anybody else were to work on this, they would have some sort of clue what is going on. Okay, so here we have a 
a schematic wiring diagram, if you will, um, of the circuit breakers uh, for the different uh, uh, power-hungry devices. And uh, they've been taken out from the breakers and they have been uh, fed through this current sensing uh, switch over here, which is like a CT current transformer with a, uh, an output on it so it can drive a relay. And um, all the sort of really heavy duty appliances like the oven, the kettle, uh, the washing machine and the ceramic hob, they all uh, pass through this so it senses the current they pass through this hole over here. It's completely insulated. And it, it senses the current. And uh, if it uh, goes ab above a certain threshold, which you adjust here um, on this little uh, adjustment here, um, then um, you, uh, you can then trigger a relay. And in this case, the, the relay is uh, normally closed. And when it's triggered, it uh, turns off the uh, water heater over here um, and uh, that means that um, the uh, water heater won't be on when one of these these appliances here are um, are operating and uh, it's fed off the same breaker the supply comes off from the water heaters breaker passes through this current sensing switch and uh, then onto the coil of the relay and um, then it picks up the neutral from the neutral bar. Uh, fairly simple, really. All the um, extra contacts have been bridged out for more current, a bit of redundancy and longevity. And um, it's fairly simple, really. So you just have to take them out, pass them through, and then put them back into the breakers again. If they don't all fit through this, this one um, current sensing switch, you can always fit another one. They're cheap enough and just link it up to the to the same relay circuit you can do multiple circuits to to make the, the thing more more complicated but it this simple setup here was was perfectly adequate for me uh, okay. i think it was about a tenner this uh, this is a fairly good quality relay i would recommend buying it from a good supplier and uh yeah it, it's it's that simple it seems to work really well i'll mount everything on din rail and uh, make it really neat so I thought I'd give you an example of how the whole system is uh, is working. Um, so I'll switch the kettle on and that should disable the boiler. So you can see the neon is illuminated, the kettle is working. You can hear it boiling. Let's look at the neon at the bottom of the boiler. It's currently off. So now let me go and turn the boiler off and see if the... So turn the kettle off and see if the boiler turns off. Kettle off. And the neon has turned back on again. Now let me turn the kettle back on again and then the neon on the boiler should turn off. As it turns out, it doesn't matter if, if the water heater is temporarily turned off because it keeps its temperature. So if, you, if the washing machine, for instance, is running and it's heating water, it detects there's a relay that disables the circuit for the boiler. Um, it's kind of a, a form of load shedding, so it sheds the load that's non-essential, but it does it automatically. And both your uncle, the problem solved.